One of the most obvious things that all the people with Home Assistant like to brag about is their UI. And with the recent releases of Home Assistant, we had a lot of changes with the tile cards. But we also have mushroom cards and a lot of other things that can improve your UI design. Today we'll be looking at a relatively new component, HACS front-end integration, that will allow you to have pop-up cards. We'll start in a couple of seconds. I do love finding gems in HACS or hacks, but this find is not my find. I must thank Alpha65 for this one on Twitter because he gave me a hint a couple of months ago. I did install, I did play for a bit, but just recently I got enough time to look more in depth and to see what this lovely bubbly card can do. So today we'll be looking at the bubble card and it's not officially on the HACS, but we can add it very quickly. For start, let's look at GitHub repository and the link will be down in the video description because you will be needing this link to get the URL that we will be pasting back in the Home Assistant. This card is pretty new, but it already has more than 650 stars or likes or thumbs up or whatever you call them. And by the way, when we are all talking about stars, thumbs up and things like that, don't forget to give thumb up to this video. But what actually bubble card is? Well, the easiest way for me is to show you and I will be showing you images here and later on what I've done in my setup. On my test setup I haven't touched my production setup because that's a different beast that I don't have time to play with. Bubble card is, well, actually bubble card. You start by creating various rooms. I do recommend that you stick with three or maximum four rooms per screen. In my opinion this card is best viewed on the mobile phone and it gives you all the advantages there, but you can also use it on the tablet or your PC. I did create all my cards on PC, but I also tested all of them on my phone. And if everything goes well, you should now be seeing how those cards look at my mobile phone. I did try to get more cards on one display, but unfortunately, because of the size of the bubble, the navigation bar at the bottom, well, you actually then have to either remove the name of the cards or do something to get more of them on one page. That's why I created a couple of views and each view holds three rooms. Good thing also is that you can configure this card completely through the UI. Although, on the other hand, I did a lot of configuration via the YAML because yes, you can also do it via the YAML. The great thing is that you can stack things. For example, you can create a view with a bunch of vertical stack cards. You can also have inside vertical horizontal stack cards and you create a view that you want for a room, add it to the bubble and then each time you press a button on the bubble, it will pop up. One of the things that you can also use this with is, for example, you create a bubble that says CCTV. Then you create a view with all of your cameras, but you also have option to use trigger on state, meaning that if there is a motion detected by the motion sensor or camera, that bubble can then pop up and you will see the stream from that camera, which is really awesome. So let's get started with the installation. First things first, we need to copy the GitHub URL. For the hacks installation, you need to copy the repository URL. This is this one here. Copy it with control C. Go to your instance of HACS front-end, click on three dots, custom repositories, paste the URL, select category Lovelace and add it. We can now close it and at the bottom of this list you should see bubble card. Click on it, download it. At the time of the video recording the latest version is version 1.2.4 and once again click on download. Reload and that's it. Okay, let me now show you what I've done in my setup. We all know normal standard UI cards, but these two here, first floor and the second floor, are the ones that have been created with the bubble card. Let me first show you how they work, how you would use them after you create them. On the first floor, I have living room, dining room and kitchen. Yes, you can have either icons, 
names or bold icons and names. If I click on living room, pop-up will pop up. And I have here the state of the living room. This is the overall state of the lights, the heating information, this is a nested mushroom card. Then I have divider for the lights, divider for the appliances, and we have also auto close. These are all the options that you can control. You can disable auto close, you can reduce or increase the time it takes for the bubble to close down. It all depends on what you want and how you want your system to work. We then have dining room and kitchen. If you have noticed difference, some of the lights are full length, the other ones are half length. This all has been done with the nested horizontal cards. And this is nested vertical card. So you can play and create whatever type of the card you want to do. We then have a second floor with bedroom, somebody doesn't know how to spell, Luca room and Zeta room. Okay, now let's start from the scratch. Let me create a new blank card, we will call it bubble. And we have to start, and first we will start with the creating of one bubble. And the last thing will be to create a menu that will be opening that bubble. We click on add cards, select vertical, because we want to stack multiple cards. Then the first card or first thing inside that card will be once again bubble, bubble card. Card type will be pop-up. There is option to use button, cover, empty column, which is used if you have an even number of entities and you have multiple entities in a row, so you can have an even space between a couple of rows. Then we have pop-up and the separator. This time we will go with pop-up. We have to select for each of the views or each of the bubbles separate name. This has to be unique hash. Let's call this one balcony. You can give the card optional name and it will be visible on the card here. Then we can select an optional icon. Icon will be visible here. If you want this to be also toggleable, meaning that you can turn the on or off group of lights, you can select it here. For example, balcony light. And if you also have a temperature sensor for that area, you can add it here. You can now add additional text. if needed, and the text will be added to that button. Let's remove it. And I've shown you how it looks with the optional auto close. It is defined in milliseconds. If we add 15,000, we should have the same auto close as I've shown you a couple of seconds ago. There is also option to use pop-up trigger. Pop-up trigger can be used, for example, if there is a motion or a camera or something like that, to trigger that specific view. For example, not door contact, is this contact on my table, and the state will be on. If we want to close this pop-up automatically when the state changes to off or closed, we can use this one here. There are a lot of styling options, but I will not be going through them. You have option to make a customized styling for each of the cards, for all of the views, etc. But I do recommend that you go through the documentation on that one. Let's click save. For now, we have only one entity in this card. In order for us to call this card, we have to once again click on add cards, bubble card, horizontal button stack. This is that horizontal bar we'll be using. You can disable or enable auto order. It means that, for example, if the room has sensors or something inside, such as motion or whatever, it will base the order of rooms based on the state of that sensor. The last one that was triggered will be the first in line to be shown on the list. We now add buttons. Since we only have one view that is called balcony, we will add button one with the hashtag balcony. Optional name once again can be balcony or it can be something else. The icon once again is optional. Once again, you can, but do not have to specify here the light group. If you do specify, you here will see the state. For example, if the lights are on, this button will be also different color. And for the presence sensor, we will use this one. This is actually not a presence sensor, but contact sensor, but nevertheless, it should work. You have again styling options for the margin and for the width on screen. Save. 
if we exit the editor, we now have one button called balcony, but we created a special configuration for this card. Since we tied it with the motion sensor or actually the contact sensor, each time the door opens, or for example, there is a motion, we can pop up the view and get the view of the camera. And when there is no motion, it will close the screen. <laughs> and it's really awesome. You can click on edit, click on plus, because this is a vertical stack. Let's add bubble. Let's add separator. Separator is used to separate or group entities. For example, I use it to divide lights, appliances, etc. You can do and use it for anything you want, or just to give a brief description of something. Then click once again plus, and now we can add something else. For example, picture entity. Save. What this now means is that, for example, if there is a motion, I can have a pop-up that will automatically show me the stream or feed from my cameras. If your camera also supports it, you can use the trigger from the camera, from the motion detection on the camera, and traveling cameras do have that, to pop up the screen. And this is really awesome. But as I said, this is not everything you can do with this bubble card. Let's once again click on Edit Dashboard. Let's be creative and add something else. Add card, vertical stack. Inside vertical stack, let's add bubble card. This will be pop-up. Let's call this one, for example, living room. Name will be living room. Icon will be sofa. There is a light group called living room. We do have entity for the temperature sensor. We want also this one to automatically crawl, close. We will not be using this pop-up trigger because we don't need it. We want to manually open this view when we need it. And this is how it looks now. As you've noticed, this color has changed. This color has changed because there are some lights that are currently on in the living room. Let's add new. We will now be adding bubble card, separator, lights, then click on plus, add horizontal stack. Inside horizontal stack, we will once again be adding Bubble card, card type will be button, entity will be one of the lights, for example, standing light. We can change the icon. Let's add additional light. We will leave it as switch and I will show you the difference between the switch and the other option, desk lamp. Then let's add a new bubble card. This one will also be button, but for this one I want to add specific control. This will be ceiling group, that has multiple lights, but instead of button type switch, I will be using button type slider. Ok, let me now show you what this actually does, but before that we have to add this to the horizontal navigation bar. Let's edit this one, click on add button paste the hashtag we've added to that living room area, add name, optional icon, light group, occupancy sensor, and save. If we now click on this living room icon, it will pop up the screen here. We can toggle the lights or turn the lights on and off for the ones that are represented as switches, but for this one here, we can change the brightness by sliding or using this slider. If we wait long enough, the pop-up will close automatically, because we've added that pop-up or close-down timer. This is not all. Let's click on Edit. Let's add something new. What about adding mushroom things? Of course, mushroom climate cards. Why not? Now, by clicking Living Room, we also have Mushroom card. This all depends if you want to mix and match. Of course, the Mushroom design is not the same as this bubble card, so you have to be careful what types of the cards you are mixing in. 
But for me, in my case, I really do like this combo of the mushroom cards, climate cards, with the bubble cards. Let's click on three dots again. Let's add something else. Bubble card. Let's add cover. As you can see, there is a specific card to control the curtains or covers or whatever you have that can open and close and be stopped. How the end result will look depends on you. You can add as many things as you want. But even if this card is open or this bubble is open, if there is motion on that previous card, you will see the pop-up once again with the stream from your camera. If you remember a couple of months ago, or I believe it was the uh, end of last year, we had nested cards in Home Assistant that allow you to open card one level below the cards that you currently see, which was awesome concept, but I really do like this one. So what's your opinion? Will you be using bubble card? What do you think is the best thing about the bubble card and what is the weakest thing or weakest link in it? Is this pop-up for the cameras the easiest thing you have seen for Home Assistant or is there any better solution for it? And if you are already using bubble card, I really would like to see how your bubble cards look. I'm terrible at design, I have no idea how to do things, so this falls in a category maximum of what I will be able to do. As I said, there are still additional things that you can do, but for that you have to go to GitHub and read the documentation, especially in terms of the overall design, style, etc. If you do end up installing this card, don't forget to go to the GitHub and give this repository a star. And also big shout out to Clues from Belgium for creating this awesome HACS Lovelace component. But let's not forget my wonderful YouTube channel members who are supporting me and have been doing that for a long, long, long time. Thank you for all of your support. And let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below. And for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month, you can support this channel. Or go to my merchandise store and get something there. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.